Granoff Chapter 4, Revenue Recognition Part 1. Gap for Revenue Recognition is GASB Statement Number 33. Under modified accrual basis, revenues cannot be recognized until they are both measurable and available to finance expenditures of the fiscal period. Collection of cash must be reasonably assured before revenues can be recognized. Available? The 60-day rule has become the benchmark, but some governments have also established 30, 90 days, or one-year time period. But again, the 60-day rule is what we cover in the chapter, and that is the benchmark. There are two broad types of transactions, non-exchange and exchange. Here's an example of revenue re recognition in a CAFRA, and this is the city of Louisville, Ohio. This illustrates the city's implementation of the GASB Statement 33. Revenue, exchange and non-exchange transactions. Revenue resulting from exchange transaction in which each party gives and receives essentially equal value is recorded on the accrual basis when the exchange takes place. On a modified accrual basis, revenue is recorded in the fiscal year in which the resources are measurable and become available. Available means that resources will be collected within the current fiscal year or are expected to be collected soon enough thereafter to be used to pay liabilities of the current fiscal year. For this city, available means expected to be received within 60 days. So that's based on what we talked about, the benchmark, and what we're going to use for this course. Non-exchange transactions. External events in which a government gives, receives value without directly receiving, giving equal value in exchange. Revenue recognition depends on time requirements, the period in which the resources are required or may be used. Some exchange transactions may be delayed until program eligibility requirements are met. Purpose restrictions reported as restricted net assets or reserved fund balance. There are four non-exchange transactions. Derived tax revenues, imposed non-exchange revenues, government mandated non-exchange transactions, and voluntary non-exchange transactions. The standards for the last two transactions apply to both revenues and expenditures. Derived tax revenues. These are derived from assessments on exchange transactions carried on by taxpayers. These include sales taxes and income and other taxes on earnings or assets. These are recognized as revenue when the underlying exchange transaction takes place. For example, sales taxes should be recognized in the period of the underlying sale. Imposed non-exchange revenues. Assessments imposed on individuals and business entities. The most prominent of these are property taxes and fines. Property tax, it is the bread and butter of local governments. These are classified as ad valorem taxes based on value. Property taxes are most typically levied against real property. There are special assessments, which is a special type of property tax. Other types of imposed non-exchange revenues include fines and forfeits. These are recognized in the year for which they are levied. Government mandated non-exchange transactions. These occur when a government at one level, for example, the federal or a state government, provides resources to a government at another level, for example, a local government or a school district. These require the recipient to accept and use the resources for a specified purpose. Voluntary non-exchange transactions. These result from legislative or contractual agreements entered into willingly by two or more parties. They include certain types of grants given by one government to another and contributions from individuals. These are similar to government mandated non-exchange transactions, but the recipient government is not required to accept the award. Two types of limitations on non-exchange transaction revenue. Time requirement. These specify the period in which resources must be used or when the use must begin. Purpose. These are eligibility requirements. 
These specify the purpose for which the resources must be used. Dedicated taxes, restricted grants. Property taxes. Property taxes are viewed as a residual source of revenues in an amount equal to the total revenue needs, less the sum of the beginning of the year fund balance, and revenues expected to be realized from all other sources. So in other words, the entity is planning its budget and planning the property tax a levy. And so it looks at all of its needs, what it starts the period with, unassigned fund balance that can be used, and revenues from other sources. What's left is to be received from the property tax levy, and that's how they set the property tax rates. The gross tax levy is calculated as the amount of revenue required from property taxes divided by the estimated collectible portion of the, of the tax levy. Accounting for property tax revenue. The tax levy is the amount billed to taxpayers. The tax rate is the measure that is actually set by the legislative action, the elected body, once the required size of the levy is determined. Property taxes in Texas. January, appraisal notices are mailed. Property owners have the right to appeal the appraised value. July, appraisal appeals are over and the property tax rolls are certified. Some properties are exempt from taxes, uh, schools, churches, nonprofits. June, July, August, city councils, boards of trustees, county commissioners, independent school boards, elected bodies, hold public budget hearings and pass the budget. The elected body sets the tax rate based on the estimated revenue needs, other sources of revenue, and property valuations. October, property taxes are levied. Uh, they become due, but the deadline is generally January 31st, the, the absolute deadline. Continuing, assume revenues of 990000 are required and it is estimated that 1% will be uncollectible. Thus, we divide to get the levy of a million dollars. In the general journal, the debit is to taxes receivable current. Revenue is the net expected to be received. And then there is an allowance account estimated uncollectible current taxes that is credited. Special assessment taxes, special kind of derived property tax, levied against certain properties deemed to receive a particular benefit that not all taxpayers received. Examples may be street repair, street cleaning, snow plowing for taxpayers who live outside the normal service area. 